What's up folks, Tony DeVille, DeVille Films, and welcome to our first tutorial. We're going to do a little green screen. Now I'm assuming that you guys are already familiar with After Effects. You have a camera, you have a green screen, you know how to shoot your footage, you know how to import it and create a composition. So that being said, we're going to jump right in. So now I've already imported my green screen footage and my background image. So the first thing we need to do is grab our pen tool and create a garbage mask around our subject. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go to Effects and Presets, type in Key Light, grab our Key Light 1.2 effect, and drop that onto our green screen layer. We're going to go up to the dialog box and change Final Result to Intermediate Result. Now we're going to go to our eyedropper tool, we're going to click on our green screen. Next, come down to RGB, change this to Alpha so we can see our mat a little bit better. Okay, so now let's go up to screen gain and we're going to pull this up a little bit just so you see that black clear up. Uh, open up the screen mat, go to clip black, boost that just a hair. Uh, you can see the black is starting to clear up a lot now. And then let's go down to clip white and we'll pull that down until we get rid of all this gray right in the middle of our subject. And that's looking pretty good. Switching back to RGB, we see uh, in the hat here there's some business going on. We're going to have to take the screen shrink and grow. We're going to pull that back a little bit and that'll suck in the key. Um, now in his hair, there's still some green, some, some spillage. So we're going to go type in advanced spill suppressor and we're going to grab that effect and drag it onto our footage and you'll see that um, it works really well at pulling that green spill out. Now that looks pretty good but I would like to soften this edge a little bit so I'm going to come up here to screen softness and I'm just going to push that up just ever so slightly just to soften up that edge around the subject. Okay, for all intents and purposes, this looks pretty good. So we're going to go up to the project panel. We're going to grab our background image. I already imported this image of an abandoned stage. And then we're just going to drag it into our composition underneath our green screen layer. And that's already looking pretty cool. Okay, so I do see the perspective is off just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale him down just a bit pull him down here and that looks pretty good okay so now we have to turn these images into 3d images so we can move them around in z-space so you're gonna have to if you don't see the 3d icon you can toggle where it says toggle switches right down here and it will re reveal more options and you can just click off these two little cubes here now your layers are uh, in 3d now in our background image, we're going to go to position and you'll see this last coordinate here. This will move it in Z space. How we just pulled it forward and it came past Mike and now it's going behind Mike. So we want to push this back in Z space. Okay, next we're going to take the image of Mike and we're going to do the same thing in the other direction. We're going to grab position and we're going to push him forward in Z space or that three dimensional plane. Next, we have to create a camera. So we're going to go to New, Camera, and 50 millimeters is fine. Two node camera, click OK. Go up to the left and you'll see the camera icon. Uh, click that and come down to Track X and Y. That'll reveal this little camera. And as you see, as you move it across the screen, you can pan your camera left and right. Gives a really cool parallax effect. So what we'll do is open up the camera options, set the stopwatch on point of interest and position. That'll drop in a couple of keyframes. Then we'll scrub across to the end of our timeline. We'll grab our camera and we'll pull our scene in the opposite direction. That'll set another keyframe. So now we've created a really cool animated camera move. Okay, so if you've noticed, um, Mike and the background, they're not really matching up as far as color is concerned. Mike is a little bit, looks like he's a little bit too light. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our green screen layer and we're going to 
pull up a curves effect. So we're gonna go to color correction, curves. And I'm just gonna pull down this RGB level just a bit, and darken him up so he looks like he fits into the scene a little bit better. And um, let's see if we can pull these reds down just a little bit. Maybe take the greens, pull them down a bit. And he looks a little oversaturated. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into color correction. We're gonna go to hue and saturation. And I'm gonna pull the master saturation down on him just, well, just a little bit more. And um, he looks pretty good there. Now you could really drive yourself crazy with trying to perfect a key. What I would suggest you do is do a rough key, get your background in, create your camera, do your camera move, and uh, you'll see sometimes a key that you thought was real garbage actually looks really good. I don't really see any problems with this and I, I barely even worked on it. So uh, another little trick to make your scenes look a little more cinematic is to go to your uh, composition settings and change them from 1080p to uh, 817. It's just more of like a cinematic aspect ratio. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Okay. Um, I do see a little issue with the framing. I think he's a little bit low in the frame, so we're going to have to go into the camera. And um, let's open this up. Um, we'll grab the camera, and we'll go to the beginning of our sequence, and we're going to pull this up to right about here. And then let's drag the playhead to the end, and we'll uh, take our camera, and we'll also pull this up at the end here. And I think this looks... Much, much better. Cool. Yeah, there's something weird going on with uh, the parallax effect uh, between Mike and the scenery. He looks a little bit, looks a little unnatural, so I'm just going to push him back in Z space just a little bit. Uh, I think that was the problem. I think I had him too far forward. Yeah, that looks a lot better. He was uh he was moving a little bit too too much uh in comparison to that row of chairs so this looks a lot better so I mean you really could be done with this now it looks pretty cool but um, we want to take it to another level so there's another simple trick that you can do to create a little more depth in uh, in this scene so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this image of Mike and we're gonna click command D that will duplicate the layer then I'm going to shut our original layer off. Now what we need to do is we can open this up, toggle down the effects, go to curves and um, effect controls and we're going to take the RGB level and we're going to take it and bring it all the way down as far as it can go. So we're going to turn this image completely black. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do, we'll go to our layer, um, down to transform, and we'll go to, uh, if you see over here, X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation. If you click on Y, you'll see he will spin from side to side, or he's going to rotate on the Y axis. Go to X and we can kind of flip him down. So it looks, it's kind of close over there. 
So we'll drag him down onto the floor, right about here. Let's take the Z rotation and we'll kind of position him this way. Drag him down a little bit further. And we're going to stretch him out. This is a good starting point. Now we're going to go up to uh, effects to blur and we're going to add a uh, Gaussian blur. We're going to pull that all the way up and blur that out. Okay, next thing we need to do is go down to the opacity and we're going to just cut the opacity down and make it more shadow-like. That looks pretty good for now. So let's um, let's turn our other layer back on and see what we look like. Okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, so now we can see there's a little bit of an issue here um, with this shadow layer. It seems to be intersecting the other layer. So all we have to do is just kind of, you can see if I move it, it's like a slice. So we're going to pull that down to where it's on the ground. That looks pretty good right about there. I think I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, I'm going to rotate this guy just a little bit. Okay, I mean, that's not bad. It's passable for, for now. I mean, it's it's the kind of thing that you could play around with this thing all day long uh, just to get it absolutely perfect. But we just want to suggest that there's a shadow there. And um, I think this is going to do the job. Okay, so just another couple of things we're going to do. Uh, we're going to create an adjustment layer. We're going to go to color, little effect, go to color correction, go to tint. Oh, try it down. No, I didn't want to do that. So let's go back. Let's undo that. Go back up to color correction, tint. Okay, now if you don't see this toggle over here, you can go to toggle switches, turn that on, and switch this layer from normal to soft light and as you can see um, it just puts a it adds a nice effect to the to the whole scene it really um, kind of makes both those images kind of blend together okay looking good next we're going to create another adjustment layer uh, we're going to grab the ellipse double click on that and um, we're going to go to Effect, to Color Correction, uh, we'll go pull up Curves again, we'll go to the RGB and we're going to pull that really way down here, uh, and we'll go to our Layer and click Inverted, then we will, let me turn off this mask so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's just feather this out just a little bit, and voila, we've got a nice little vignette to draw our eyes into the center of this image. So this looks pretty good, and um, yeah, I'm happy with this, and I think, uh, I think we're about done, folks. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I look forward to making the next one, and uh, if you did enjoy it, please uh, hit the like button, and uh, I would love for you to subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.